Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and we now have the new format of Heroes Jubilee, Turn Limit Boss Battle. So, they have condensed the stages from three tabs into just, you know, one, one list. So you got beginner, normal, and then you got your three stages of expert right here. And then for the boss fights, there are only two fights. One is a five turn limit, and one is a seven turn limit. Um, I'm still trying to understand what I'm supposed to do here. Obviously, if you have the new space team, you could rock this stage, because if we go into this handy dandy new info tab that shows you pretty up to date rankings on each individual stage now, which I do think is a very, very nice quality of life uh, update. It shows you popular battle units, popular protection units, and then it shows you an individual list of that score for that stage, instead of just being the overall score for the entire Jubilee. And as you can see, Infinity, sitting up here with 103,000, um, because he has Guy, and he has Rain, and he has Velzard, and if you AoE for days with the debuffs always on, and, you know, you're getting 35% ult gauge every single time, and you're making greens and miseries here boosting, then yeah, you're gonna AoE like every turn and you're gonna bump that score really high. But for a plebeian like me who doesn't have any of the new units, I have to make do with, you know, the typical I'm gonna stack with the water team or the space team until I can just cap out. So that's what I did for my boss battles, but we'll get to that in the next video. Today is all about the normal battles. So these are my ranks. Rank 6, and I don't expect to get much higher than that because my water team, Hanada's only 80. Uh, my wind team is ass. Wind Diablo is just a level 80 noodle, and he is not as good as Hanada. And then this I'm actually pretty proud of. Uh, this stage is actually kind of hard, so let's, uh, let's dive in. Disclaimers, um, protection gauge characters, Dark Millum, Gazel, Earth Millum. Don't forget to uh, set your magic buildings in town, and then your results may vary based on your box. So, the I haven't been able to replicate my best run on uh, Expert 1, apart from the one that I did last night on my stream. So we're just going to pull that over real fast, fast, and we're going to watch that. So we've got right here, I know it's totally meta watching my own videos, watching my own stream. But this is the best run I've ever gotten, and I have not been able to replicate it since, because the amount of RNG that I got is too much to bear. And besides going for Kenya strats, which I'm not a fan of, <laughs> uh, this is the best we can do. So, turn one. Actually, I should probably show you the team first, huh? Shouldn't I? Let's go, let's go back to that. So, normal expert one. Normal one. Do I still have the team set up? Uh, not that team. It is this team. Okay, so we've got Hakuro, we've got Romarus for her trait for the extra 6% attack if you're over a certain amount of HP. Alice is the required unit for orb changing. Shion's here for the boosting, Hero's here for the rewind, Shuna's here for the boosting and single target, and then Hinata's here for the single target and her own boosts. So this is the team that we're running. I've got Rimuru on uh, Shuna for that extra ult gate or extra protection gauge on turn two and three, if she's still in. Velzard's on Hinata. So let's bring this back over. So turn one, we do orb change with Alice to make those two blues into a six green. And then we're gonna bring in Hinata and Shuna. Because they are they are my primary single target damage dealers. It'd be cool if I could get Shuna, uh, Shion, and Hinata's ult, but it didn't really work out, especially not the way I have the team set up, because I gotta take one of them out for the rewind next turn, so someone's not gonna get an ult. So, phase one, kill the mushroom with a six card hand. Turn two, you get, like, defense and crit sealed, but it doesn't matter, because it's like your crit defense, so no one's, no one's critting you, because they're not gonna live. So here, we have to bring the hero in for someone, and we have to make the conscious decision of who we're taking out. Do we sacrifice the AoE buffer, who has protection gauge, or do we sacrifice Shuna, who's got Rimuru, who's the single target? And we wisely choose to do Shion if we move forward a bit. So Shion's out, hero is in, we use the rewind, and then we use Hakuro here. 
And that will enable us to get Shuna and the Heroes alt, because we have orbs for them, but not Hinata, which is unfortunate, which could very well be a lot of what your runs look like. But the Rewind hand worked out really well in my favor, because, as you'll soon see, four blue, two orange, and four of them are Hinata. And I just so happen to have an orange to blue orb changer on the field right now, who's not going anywhere. So that is why I have not been able to replicate my score again, because I have not gotten that kind of RNG ever since last night. So easiest thing to do is <laughs> orb change. We're going to take out the hero for Alice. That way we can get one more hit of, you know, extra water damage. And then we're going to get Hinata's ult right here. We have Shuna's ult ready. We have maximum points, double protection gauge, which means we can use three big buffs and Hinata's buff on turn three. So we're looking pretty good right here. Wow, this screen looks really weird with my banner doubled up. <laughs> Anyways, so there's the six card send. The mushroom is dead. We move on to turn three. And now, I mean, you pick and choose. The hand turned out pretty good for everything that's said and done. So now I want to decide who's going to benefit, what crit is going to benefit me more. The crit and crit resistance down on two units, or the crit and magic attack on all three units. And I decide to go with Shion, because she's going to buff everyone, because we're going to swap out Alice for whoever it is, right? And Shion's going to have two orbs, so I'd rather her two orbs be also buffed by everything than missing a buff on normals. So there's the alt boost. We'll use Hakuro. And then we will have enough to use the crit and magic attack buff. We'll use Hakuro again. And this will be the water buff and then Hinata's personal buff. Zero points left on the board, so this is it. And now you just have to be strategic on where you're sending orbs because we want to Alt 2, and then have that last Hinata orb kill the last mushroom for that 200% damage boost. So we're going to spread out the Shuna and Shion orbs. Uh, 1, 2, and 3. Hopefully they don't kill, which they don't, thank god. So 1, 2, and then 3. And then we'll go back and we'll choose the mushroom, which I technically should have targeted the mushroom in the middle with Hinata, because it had the resistance down, but it's okay. Hinata goes and ults for 130, Shuna hits for 77, and then this final Hinata orb for 200% does 36-7, which probably actually would have been more than what Shion's alt would have done, so I'm okay with it. So 44057 is still my top score for this stage, so 44057, have not been able to beat it, but that is... Uh, normal 1. Let's move on to normal 2 now. The worst stage. Alright, so this is the team that I used for ba or normal battle 2. Another Hakuro strategy. This time with kind of the win 2.0 team. You've got Dino here. You've got um, da -da -da, Diablo 2.0 as well. There is a strategy where you can use Gabiru instead, which I'll also put in here. Um, so, ideally, you would want Dino, both of Dino's debuffs, the Melon boost and the Hero boost and you know Diablo's boost on everything, and it's it's a whole cluster. So let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, Dino is single target. Uh, Diablo is also single target. Milim is AoE, which you're going to need a Milim ult. But sadly, these bats are tanky as hell. So it is really, really hard to damage them. So Milim's second skill, her guard penetration, actually does come in handy here for, you know, the first time that I ever remember it being useful. <laughs> but Mirren is here for her orb change because the hand does start out with two green and four orange. So we need her for the orb change. And then we'll send her away for Diablo, leave all my wind units up front, and then we will go ahead and target down one bat, and you'll see just it does almost nothing. <laughs> they just have too much defense, too much guard. Ugh, it's bad. So then, on this turn right here, 
it's kind of dependent on what you want to do. Because you only have 58 points. You have Hakura, which will give you another 40, but you have to use the Hero Rewind, so it's only actually give you 10. Because that costs 30. So we can use some of the debuffs now, because they do last for two turns, and Diablo's attack buff lasts for three turns, so you can use it now and, you know, never fear that she'll run out of it. So we use one of the debuffs, we use the rewind, we'll use Hakuro to get a six card send, this will get Diablo and Milim's ult, and then we'll use Diablo's attack buff, since remember it stays active, and then... We'll just send on the next bat down the line and try and do damage to it. Get them each as lo individually low as possible. That way you can alt one or two if you have Dino's alt, and then Milim can alt the other one or the other two, depending. But idea like re realistically, my 100 Milim cannot kill without like multiple buffs on her, which is something to say. So this is the rewind turn. We're going to keep focusing on the middle bat because he has he's not as low as I want him to be. So now we have a double alt with Melon, which doesn't matter. We have an alt with Diablo, which does matter. And we have 100 points and a full Hakuro gauge. It'd be good if we had two Hakuro gauges, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So let's go ahead and use that right there. Give ourselves the crit. And then we'll use Hakuro again. Make that entire hand of orange. Now we've got all wind units on. We've got Milam's alt boost, so now we're alt boosted, we're crit buffed. Diablo has his attack buff, and now we have 30 points where we could use Dino's debuff. There we go. Or we could have used the guard penetration. It kind of goes whatever way you want. If you don't have Dino, then I, I guess I know what skill you're using. So, here. What do we want to do? Do we want to individually take down each bat? Do we want to make them lower? So we're going to 2-2, we're going to send Diablo on the third bat, and then we're going to pray that Milim can actually kill the two that are kind of low, but really they have like three quarters of their health left. So Diablo, 41k, not good, but you know it's what we got. Milim, 20k and 31k because it has the resistances down on it. And that clears it on turn three by a very small margin, 37 point, uh, th whoop, let's go back. 37.184. So that was... Mm, that was my best score early this morning, but then I did manage to get a little bit better using the Gabiru team. So let's go ahead and find that now. Alright, so this is the Gabiru team. We've swapped protectors and we've swapped the supporter Dino for trainee so maybe a lot of you have trainee more because you summon for her because she's waifu and not Dino because Dino is eh, I mean we, we needed him right but he's not exactly what I would consider hype so Gabiru, trainee, Mirren, Milim, Diablo and Hero that pretty much runs the same way except this time I wanted to make sure that since Gabiru buffs the magic damage of the unit with the highest attack we can try and play around with that to our favor, where we can put it on Diablo and then hide him, and then put it on Milim, so they both have that boost alongside the crit and the ult and whatever, and what have you. So let's go ahead and start this video up. And we'll fast forward through all that. There we go. All right. Surprisingly, I only got this done in one take. It... It required some thinking, but you know, it worked out. So there's the orb change. We'll go ahead and bring Diablo in for Mirren, just like the old one. And now again, we're going to single target everything on one bat, just to get it low. It really doesn't matter what bat you choose. I chose the middle one because I was already there. It doesn't matter. They all are incredibly tanky. And if you get lucky to not have the one of them guard your attacks or so, even better. So, here we go. Turn two, we get a pretty good hand, except that Gabaru doesn't change oranges, right? He doesn't do a three and three like the good protectors do. He does one flat, all greens to blues. So it's kind of unfortunate right here. Trainee is a special converter, so she'll change one of those, but not all of them. 
So there we use Gabru. We put the buff on Milam now. So she has the attack buff. So now we're going to bring in the hero, and we're going to rewind, because Gabru also gives us 15 points, which is useful. So let's go ahead and use the rewind and Diablo's attack buff. And now we're just going to go ahead and send the oranges and pray that we can get something good out of this. And we almost do, which now I realize I can't bring Trainee in. It's kind of unfortunate again, but oh well. We're going to swap Milam out so she can keep the alt with the magic boost that she got from Gabaru. And then we're going to go ahead and send this five of blues, which gets us Diablo's alt. And then, because he has his attack boost on, when I use Gabaru the second time on this third turn, he's going to get the magic boost. And not Hero and not Milam, because he does have a higher attack set than both of them now. So here, what we can do is we can choose to either alt boost, because we don't have enough to use both big buffs, right? We, we don't have 110 points to use the Hero and Milam. So we have to bring Milam in for Mirren. She has four cards, so it's pretty good. And then we'll bring Trainee in for the hero. We're going to forego the hero buff for the alt boost. So therefore, everyone's getting buffed. We'll use Gabru again. And now Diablo got the magic boost. And now we'll use the wind buff for Diablo, which I forgot that the wind buff was only for one. I thought it was for everybody, like Romarus was. So that was my bad. I thought Milim would get an extra little bump from that, but she didn't. So we're going to send everything on the final bat that we didn't hit the first two turns to try and get him as low as possible, which you do okay damage there. And then Diablo comes in with 54, and then Milam with the magic boost, and the alt does 25 and 23. So we do end up doing more damage than the Dino. It, this worked out a little bit better, so 37-8 is my current highest score, and that score will not go up. This stage is awful. <laughs> Terrible. I... If you don't have Win 2.0, your best bet is to use uh, like a Hakuro team with Win Milam and then like old Wind Hakuro, like the single target, and just pray that you can do enough damage and you can get like triple buffs or something. That's really my only set of advice for you on this stage. It is incredibly tough. This one more so. Like I understand why they didn't make it the light stage because the light team nukes everything, but. Win 2.0 was not a good meta. Geld was good. Diablo can be okay. But let's move on to boss battle 3 now. Okay, so here's the team that I ran for normal. I know I said boss last time, but this is normal battle 3. Veldora, Cabby, <laughs> Shuna, Soe, because he needs we need his orb change turn 1. And he gives us additional points on, on the come out, so that's good. Hero, Milam, and Carrion. But you notice that Carrion does not have a support. And also, if you look very closely, you notice that everyone's attack stats are looking a little low. Like a little low. 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, 9,000 for Milam, and then 4,800 for Carrion. And that's because, for the first time in a while, they didn't make Stage 3 incredibly tanky. He just made them more resistant against physical hits, which is fine. Except our main damage dealer is magic, and she's quite strong, and if you send too many orbs of her, you will just kill the thing. So it's a good stage for farming tickets for the boss fight, because Milam can clear through it pretty easily. But you do have to play a little bit more strategic, and that means that uh, Carrion does not have a support, and nobody has a weapon, except for Ranga and Milam. No books, no swords, no claws, no nothing. So they can hit as lightly as possible so you have enough time to stack up, get a millimalt, but then still keep this damn thing alive. So let's go ahead and jump in. There we go. So turn one, he'll put his physical resistance uh, buff up right there. So Carrion, Hero, Soe are physical. Cool. Shuna is type disadvantage, so she'll do less damage than normal. Cool. Milam, though, like, you really need to send her first. Don't ever let her get, like, the 150 or 200% orb boost, because you will murder the thing. Her orbs need to go first. And your less, the least hard-hitting unit, which is my carrion, you said you did 140 damage. 
on the 200% boost. Like, that's what you need. You need to keep this thing alive. Turn 5 is the kill turn for this. Turn 6, if you want to push it, if you want to get, like, if you really, really want to try and get a lot of stacks and some extra buffs. This hand worked out pretty well, though. So we're going to rewind. We're going to send this entire hand of carrion. That way we can just build up points and Veldora meter. It's not getting us milling at all, but it is getting us stacks. Which is a blessing and a curse, because you need the stacks to make milim hit harder, but you don't want too many milims because you'll kill the thing. So we'll stack again with Veldora. So two stacks right here is pretty much all I can afford. And here I'm debating, do I want to send three, or do I want to send two? Or do I want to send two of the other kind? But I have to send the green and blue to get her ult. We need her ult now, but we're going to do a lot of damage. Now he's already super low, and we have two more turns to go. So let's use Drago. Let's get her out of here. Let's bring in someone. So thankfully the hand worked out. Kind of. Kind of. We're going to use the attack buff and crit buff as well, just so we can put it on her. We're going to swap her out. We're also going to swap Carrion out, because I don't want his um, his ult here either. And we're going to send Shuna Orbs. They're not going to do a lot of damage. They are magic, so they do 1400 each, which gets him low. Turn 5, we are on the kill turn. And we have enough points, barely, barely, to use the alt boost, crit boost, and space boost. So, thank god for... <laughs> thank god. Thank god for traits and for points and, you know, stacking and all that. So, alt boost here. We're gonna bring in Milim for Shuna. We're gonna use the space boost and crit boost. And now, if you want to be daring, you can check the health and see if so it will kill, which we do, and thankfully he doesn't. And then we hit for 202,000 damage with only two stacks. It's pretty good. If you get incredibly lucky and you can get Milim's ult very, very fast and then send her away and you can get physical attacks for Soe and Carrion, you could definitely get more stacks. Like, I've gotten a better run on that where I had, I think, the four stacks? And my score is higher than what this one shows. Um, so let's see, this score was... 44-3. And then I did it again later, and I'm now at 46-7, because I had two extra stacks of ult, or space attack. So, depending on your box, you can get more stacks in. But I've seen a lot of the whales who have like 100 Veldora, 100 Carrion, 100 Milim, 100 Hero. They're actually having trouble because they're killing it too fast. And there's nothing they can do about it because you can't underlevel units, right? So that is um, the space team. Honestly, like, there, you, I haven't tried to use, I can't personally, can't use the new space team on it. I don't know how well it would do. You want to do the maximum overkill damage, which the new space team isn't really good at. It's good for AoE clearing, but not single target DPSing. So Milim is still going to reign supreme here. Hopefully you have that team. Hopefully you have all of these teams. If you don't and you're just starting out, don't really feel bad about it. Jubilee is... If you're trying to go for a very good score, you, you must be a whale. You must be sweaty. You must have a lot of units to pick and choose from. If you're just starting out, just play. Just at least attempt the stages so you can get some kind of reward. And then, you know, it'll progress will come as you summon more. And as you get more characters. And as they give more free tickets and you get lucky. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you improve your score at all. I will have the boss battle fights up probably tomorrow. Um, really, since I don't have the new space team, my scores are very, very limited. But I can at least show you a couple different teams you can try and use if you don't have the new space team. So that's always something. But let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. That's it for me. Take it easy. And I'll see you later.